My name is Tom Zerbel, and in my last act as a professional cyclist, I'm going to attempt to break the U.S. hour record. Um, I can remember, you know, training at like 1 a.m. during the summers when I was like 12 years old, um, you know, running miles around my, my block as fast as I could, timing myself in the mile because I knew I had, I wanted to break the school record that, that coming fall. And, you know, no one was out there timing me. No one was, I wasn't sending my workouts to anyone. That was just me like out there, you know, trying my best. And, and conversely, I can remember um, on the JV basketball team, like not, not being played. And, you know, I felt like it was out of my hands. Like this, this decision of me not playing in this game is out of my hands and I felt out of control, and so I was just like turned away from that. Like I want to want to be the master of my own destiny. Dive team. Up that tree. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll see. We'll try. One, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> The best part about retiring for me is going to be staying at home, not being on the road 150 days out of the year. My body's still capable of racing at this level. It's all about, you know, my personal well-being. And, you know, I'm to the point where I'm borderline miserable on the road sometimes, and especially the extended trips. Having a two and a half year old son, that is different when you come home. You know, the, the rate of change and growth in a, in a toddler and a baby are so high that you're gone for a week and you come home to a slightly different kid. And that's, that's tough as a parent who wants to be involved in every aspect of, of child rearing. <laughs> so I'm just tired of that feeling and I know it's time for me. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's a perfect time for me. I'm glad I'm, 100% glad that I did this year, and I'm 100% glad that I'm done after this year. Yeah, it's all that way. Oh, it's all over there? <laughs> okay. It's all there. Okay. I'm really, really happy he's retiring. He wants to. Um, now that we have a son or a child, we both need to be home with our kid as much as we can. Um, Tom's body is done, I think with professional cycling, his mind is done with professional cycling. But we're, I think we're also both scared because we are used to being away from one another. <laughs> so we might need therapy, <laughs> couples therapy, because we, we, we have a flow where he comes and he goes. Um, and I'm nervous for him because he's, as much as he's humble, he is used to the adrenaline and he is used to the travel and working so hard every day. Um, and that's potentially not gonna happen, being at home here. And if he's studying to be an accountant, <laughs> it's a little different than um, doing the tour of California. I'll still love him. <laughs> Tavi notices it so much more when his dad is gone. It's hard, um, but Tavi and, also, Tavi and I also do some retail therapy when he's gone, so that helps. <laughs> I don't abhor like traveling like some people do, <laughs> especially now that I have a kid. It's actually a, a nice time to relax. <laughs> like I don't have to be on my toes trying to keep my kid alive. So that's kind of nice to just zone out and let someone else drive the bus. You know, I'm really excited to get on this track. I've heard good things about it, and the people have been, you know, really accommodating so far for this attempt. So, you know, we have a couple of tracks in the area, but we want the best and we want the fastest. And uh, Aguas Calientes, Mexico is the fastest track in the world. I had the support of my team uh, to help me take this on because one man cannot do it alone. Um, I didn't realize how much went into this effort, this attempt. Um, 
until I got into it, all the ins and outs. And to do it right and to do it well takes an enormous amount of resources and time and, and man hours and the whole bit. So, you know, to have the support of the team um, in this attempt is, that's why I'm able to do it. And that's, you know, that's why we're, we're gonna give it a shot. Well, I've got quite the support team coming with me to Aguas Calientes. Um, Jonas, my director of the past five years, you know, we've been through a lot of highs and lows together. He's gonna be there, you know, calling out splits and keeping me on target. Bob Gregorio, a guy who's been there from the beginning, uh, is gonna be working on my bike. So I'm not gonna have to worry about anything equipment wise. Jose Walter Spiel, who we've worked with in the past, uh, just a really great personality and, and calming force. And so he speaks the language and he'll help us with the, you know, the logistics of being down there. I feel like I'm in good hands and I have everything I need to, to go fast. ¿Qué tal Darío? ¿Cómo estás? Habla Jorge Canales del Velódromo. Que bueno, hoy estoy aquí con el equipo con Ron. The reason why why the track is one of the fastest in the world is because the, the material uh, we built with a with with a wood from we bring from Finland. It's a special wood. The other thing is there's no wind in the velodrome because it's covered by a sky dome. Um, and the altitude that we have here in Aguascalientes is almost 2,000 meters over the ocean level. One of the great things uh, that this government did here in Aguascalientes with people with not enough resources, we provide them uh, of very good bicycles and obviously the track. The little kids love BMX cycling. It's, it's amazing. Every, every month we have more kids. The kids came here and they are uh, growing in this discipline. Me llamo Robert Gregorio. Aquí estamos en el velódromo de Aguas Calientes, el más rápido del mundo. There's lots of little details associated with the bike that Tom is doing the hour record on. And I suppose the most challenging for me or, or the most time consuming details for me are the position of the bike. Setting up the bike so that it is, it is exactly perfect. The saddle height, the saddle tilt, the height of the handlebars, those sorts of things, they come down to millimeters. So obviously for a record attempt or for any cycling event, it's really important that there's no extra resistance in any of the components. So we've taken great care here to make sure that the bottom bracket is adjusted perfectly and SRAM bottom brackets are just phenomenal. Like they just keep 
spinning and spinning and spinning and uh, that's what we like to see. You know, we want the hubs to be that free also, so there's like zero resistance. If we do this with each of the moving parts on the bicycle, then the efficiency is close to 100%, which means like every bit of juice that Tom Zerbel is giving the cranks is transferred into forward motion. So yeah, little challenges like this are part of overcoming little challenges like this are part of what it means to be a mechanic. Is if you don't have a vice, you figure out a way to like stabilize your the piece that you're working on in some other way. And it looks like I'm gonna make it through. I'm glad that was a tiny bolt and not a big one. Bicycles are so simple. Uh, there's sprockets connected with a chain and a set of pedals going around in circles that uh, uh, the capacity of a bicycle as a piece of transportation is incredible. All of that said, um, we hope that this bike is gonna wind up carrying our, our athlete to a new national record. That's our hope. Class velodrome to myself. How often that happens. Uh, you know, every velodrome in the world is different. Uh, the conditions are different um, throughout the day, day to day. Uh, we're trying to find the, the best time of the day to make the effort, and we're also trying to determine the, the best gear, the best uh, tire size, uh, the best um, sort of estimated schedule for Tom and that uh, that's gonna take a few days for us to collect enough data to make some educated decisions. Seven, six. How many laps is it gonna do with the that's, that's a little bit bigger gap and you'd expect a few more watts, but I think 15 is still a little high. Well, unlike a road time trial, Tom has one, one gear and it, we have to pick the best possible gear for him. He's stuck with that gear for an entire hour. Um, the, we brought several options down here because, we, because we've never been on this velodrome before. We wanted to make sure we had several options. So we had about four different gear options and two different tire options. And the tire width on the rear tire can change the gear somewhat significantly. And so we have several options. And uh, what we're doing is running some tests with a power meter where Tom's running race pace on the velodrome and then we're downloading the information afterwards. Tom knows roughly what, uh, how many watts he can do for one hour, and he knows how many RPMs that he likes in the range that he likes to be in for that kind of an effort. And so after we do the race pace efforts, we have lap times, we have watts, we have, uh, we have the speed, we have all that information, all that data, and then we're able to sort of pick the gear that matches up with those watts and those, uh, those RPMs. I mean, it felt, still felt pretty comfortable. Like, yeah, when I got fired up, like, I was just like, I can't hear you. I'm like, I'm like six, five, six, one, six, two. I'm like, oh, wait, just, just slow down. Calm down, dude. 
Well, I, I grew up racing on the track. I never did anything like this, like an hour record. That wasn't what I was suited towards, but I have a lot of experience um, in all kinds of different track racing events. Um, and, uh, you know, track's just really different from the road. And um, there are a lot of little things that I can help Tom with. Um, the, the time of the day for the attempt is really crucial. Um, there's a lot of variables in the velodrome. This particular velodrome varies um, about 30 degrees from the morning to the afternoon, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, that it changes every single day almost. The fastest time of day would be to do it when it's not 30 degrees in here, but you can't do that. So I think the fastest time for you is going to be probably like 7 p.m., 6.37 p.m. would be like the fastest, because the temperature would maybe would be like this when you start, and then it's going to drop. The, the tough part to decide is to race when we feel the velodrome is the fastest, the conditions are the fastest, or uh, and balance that with our concern for, you know, Tom's tendency to overheat when it's really hot. And there's the outlier, it must have been a storm or something. Then 79 so you just half. count on 80. You count on it being 79 or 80 degrees um, at the start if you did it at 8 p.m. Which is a little on the hot side. But then it goes cooler during the ride. You probably lose almost, you know, might go down and it's really kind of coming down to a judgment call. We'd like to have warm temperatures and low barometric pressure and have the wood on the, on the track be warm, but we also need to balance that with the danger of Tom overheating. So after just going back and forth for three days now, we uh, finally decided to go with uh, a morning start at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., somewhere in there, um, just because of my history with the heat and uh, the morning temperatures are really consistent here. So we know that it's not going to get too hot for me at any point during the, the ride. So. Um, may not be the fastest conditions for the track, but I think it's the fastest conditions for me. So that's what we did, 100%, here we go. Yesterday was uh, like Mexican Independence Day, and um, so there was a huge party in the square where we're staying downtown Aguas Caliente, and, and then today they're having a huge parade, and this is like the military parade right in the center of the city. And so uh, we had to put Tom in a different hotel closer to the velodrome because it was like really, really loud partying until like one in the morning last night. And, uh, and now we just walked, you know, like a half a mile to get to our car. Just trying to get out to the velodrome is uh, a little more complicated than we expected. Um, yeah, I, I view myself as a bit of a loner. Um, there's no one out there helping you in a time trial. Uh, it's just you versus the clock and the course, and that's what I love about it. You know, there's there's no one to blame uh, but yourself, and no one to rely on. Um, so you know, I've come to just to accept that and and kind of thrive on it. Um, because I trust myself, I trust my training, and I know I've gone through it before, and I know how to get the most out of myself. So there is something comforting uh, in time trialing for me, um, therapeutic almost, um, because so much is at play in a road race, and you rely so much on your teammates and tactics and nutrition and all this, and it's 
you know, time traveling is simplified bike racing. <laughs> the powerful one has just arrived. No, not me. The bike that I had. Um, 20 or 30 laps, I'll do the, the yeah. okay. um, and uh, Get him, bud. event knows that you can't do it alone, not do it well anyway. So just really fortunate and I'm yeah, couldn't be happier. Falta el comisario, no falta el chico. 